corner of that small, dark room, Sholmes and I waited with bated breath. Well, I guess we're good, just in time, getting right on into there it. It came from the ventilator a hiss and a soft, almost growl like sound. Suddenly, Sholm sprang into action, lashing furiously with his cane at a point in the darkness. You see it, Wilson, he yelled, his tense voice reverberating through the air. I raised my dark lantern shutter, and the room slowly came into view. Sholmes was staring intently at one particular corner when he started whispering to me. The victim's most perplexing final words. The speckled band. I believe this is the terrible coil to which she referred, Wilson. In front of us was an enormous adder, its fangs bared as it threatened to strike. The danger knew. It truly was the most terrible speckled band I had ever seen. Well, that explains what a speckled band is. Alright, well, hello, everybody. Hey, why did it move? Okay, we're not done yet, though. Alright. So then, let us unravel this mystery. That's not Kermit voice. Oh, what events man. led to this curious murder. Pray, do excuse me. The cabin door was bolted from the inside when the man was killed. The cabin door was bolted. From no the marks to suggest the bolt was tampered with in any way. So, this would appear to be a locked room mystery. All right. In his final place. moments, the victim scrawled a message on the floor. Hmm. Almost certainly with the ink from this upset bottle. A Russian word. <gasps> so, the victim was a Russian man then. And the letters are well formed. Suggesting he was compass mentis at the time. Hmm, this is a most extraordinary script. And evidently not penned by the same hand as this message. In fact, I deduce it was written by someone of a different nationality. Well, it isn't a foreign language. This paper seal was placed just prior to the incident by the victim himself, I would venture. Whoa. Well, what have we here? Uh, that's a bit awkward. Uh, uh, who are you? And what do you think you're doing here? Da, da! No one must touch before maritime police come. We must wait! Shh. That won't be necessary. You see, in less than five seconds from now, I will reveal the killer to you. What? <gasps> don't be absurd! This is murder! I need cabin lock from inside! Ah, yes, the locked room. But that mystery is paper thin. You, you don't mean the culprit is in there? <laughs> who, who are you? And where have you come from? I'm a great British consultant detective, the only one in the world. Herlock Sholmes. I presume you must have heard of me. All right, I'm in the clear. All right, well, hello, everybody. Allie here, and welcome to the gold mine. We are here with our next episode of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles playthrough. About to get into episode two here. The something, something, something of the speckled band. So glad we learned what a speckled band is. Some type of snake, apparently. Wasn't familiar with that terminology for, I'm assuming some species of snake but curious to learn more about that also a bit disappointed i was hoping to give herlock here the kermit voice but it looks like i'll just have to go with a traditional british accent also we've learned what susato's really supposed to sound like not like this apparently so all right we're keeping the susato voice we'll see how the herlock voice goes herlock sholmes sounds like when i say it i'm like yeah herlock sholmes that sounds great but when he says it, it's like bruh herlock sholmes i don't know it just it cracks me up i know why it cracks me up i can't even say i don't know why it cracks me up just because they had to swap the letters around to avoid different copyright issues but i'm excited to learn what's going on here why do i feel like rianosuke's in the closet that would be very unfortunate why does your head hurt rianosuke we'll see 
Anyways, I'm excited to get into this next episode here. As we left off at the end of episode three, we were saved at the end of that first episode in terms of in the story game. So you can say case one. So case one, trial one, however you want to phrase it. It's technically the first episode of the game, but last episode in terms of YouTube episodes. Anyways, moving on. At the end of that, we did finish up the first part of the game, first little introductory tutorial style of the courtroom trial. So from here on out, they should be much longer. I'm curious as to how episode length is going to go. Might not be able to get to those like little intermediary points where you can just save and then it's like, oh, next part in that singular episode. We'll see how that goes. Might have to give you guys some extra cliffhangers and myself, of course, as well. But curious to see what's going to happen and curious to see how the investigation part of the game is actually going to go here. Of course, this being in the 19th century, uh, we don't have ballistic markings from the weapon. Otherwise, we could have known. Obviously, Ryanosuke didn't shoot Dr. Wilson last uh, last trial and with the crazy lady. I was hoping that her hat would pop off so we could see her face. But you know what? She laid a bunch of baby ducks, so that was a pretty good breakdown animation. So I was very pleased with that. They were super cute, and they were animated wonderfully. If you missed it, I don't know why you're watching this episode if you didn't see the last one. I mean, welcome. No judgment. Just saying you might have missed out on some stuff, not checking that out. But I'm curious how it's going to go, but it seems like Herlock here has a lot of, lot of stuff that it looks useful. So curious to see how this works. I've heard he's a bit of a dork. He sounds, he sounds very majestic. I feel like I've been using that word a lot. Cosmo is majestic. Herlock seems majestic, but it could just be putting on a good show. I also thought when he opened the closet, it was going to be another dead body, but apparently it's the, the culprits. But we'll see how that happens. Maybe Ryanosuke's in the closet here. But anyways, ugh, my head is throbbing. What's going on? Something's not right here. There's trouble in the air. All right, where are we? See some books. See some stuff on the ground. Wait. I, I can't move. Uh-oh. Did I get arrested again? Ah, what the? Why am I in handcuffs? Hmm. So you wake up now, hmm? Oh, it's the Russian guy. We had to drag you out of the wardrobe. Ryonosuke was in the closet. Bro, get... <sighs> Apparently Ryanosuke is actually just Larry Butts. Are we sure he's not Larry Butts, his ancestor? We had to drag you out of the wardrobe. I do not believe how you could not wake up. You are a true cold-blooded man. You. Huh? Y you found me then. Da, we found you. And now you pay. Criminal. How long are you hiding in that tiny wardrobe, hmm? Ugh, uh, sorry. Now you have been found. It is time to admit your crimes. Unless you want to find out how cold the ocean is, hmm? No, no, I'll tell you everything. There's only one thing I'd like to know from you. No, that's probably... Wait. Isn't that... Who is that? There's only one thing I'd like to know from you. Why did you do it? Why did you take his life? Susato, why do you think I did it? Miss, Miss Susato! Wait, what did you just say? Take his life? Um... Where is he? Where's... Co oh my... Bruh. Bruh, he got me -ed. No, no, no! And that's it, Allie's August takeover is cancelled. That's it, that's it. So. Where's Kazuma? Oh my. Bruh, this sucks! I, li I did call it, though. I feel like within the first 20 minutes of the game. <sighs> Ha, you pretend you do not know? You're a wolf in the sheep's belt. You are the killer. Don't try to make excuses. What? Cosmo-sama was... Cosmo-sama's body was discovered not too long ago. Can I get a refund? I don't want to do this anymore.
<laughs> Here in this very cabin, the bolt that was bolted shut from the inside. His his body? Please, do not try to tell us you were doing this terrible thing in your sleep. Cosmo's dead? But he can't be. We're supposed to be bros for life. And th these handcuffs, surely you don't think I... I have to know. Why did you take Cosmo Sama's life? Answer me, please! No. No! Cosma. It was just two short weeks ago. Are you sure about this? Won't we get in trouble? <laughs> Don't you find it fun being a stowaway? Besides, how else could you come to England with me to study? It was really something else when they brought your luggage in here earlier, though. The way that Russian crewman just tossed your traveling case onto the floor. I thought I was going to die! I <laughs> literally put him in the luggage. Yes, I still can't quite believe that. I really didn't think you'd be able to fit inside my trunk. You must be even less of a man than you look. Wow. Wow, okay. Thanks. Hey! Honestly, I thought I'd broken every bone in my body. Well, it's about 50 days until we dock in Great Britain. But if you confine yourself to my cabin here, I don't expect anyone will discover you. Ugh, I hope not. I get the feeling those Russians wouldn't be very forgiving of a stowaway. They're a sturdy bunch, that's for sure. What I want to know is, why do we need to keep it a secret from the young lady? our faithful judicial assistant Mikotoba, you mean? From your close friend, more to the point. Surely we could confide in her, couldn't we? I don't believe she'd give me away. No, but if she knew that knew what we'd done, that would make her guilty by association. That's true, that's true. It's best that only you and I know about this. Hmm, I suppose so. Anyway, it's about the time that the steward is supposed to come and clean the cabin. I know it's cramped, but you'd better get in there, I think. It won't be for long. And anyway, compared to hiding inside my traveling case, it'll be a breeze. Yes, but what if the steward decides to open the wardrobe for some reason? Then I'll be in for it. Stop worrying. I tell you what, why don't you write keep out or something on this piece of paper? What? Then I can stick it over the wardrobe doors once you're inside. No. We've only been at sea for about 15 days. How can this have happened? We were supposed to be going on this adventure to England together. We leave you at next port. Stay quiet until then. Don't make more trouble for yourself. Murderer. No, I'm not a murderer. Nah, you said before. You said you admit everything about your crimes. No, that's not right. I mean, yes, I did stow away on the ship, but... Murdering my best friend? No one else could have done it. Admit the truth. Um, Susato-san? That was horrible. Susato-san? Please, tell me what happened. I need to know. Very well. But there's something I would like to ask of you, too. Ugh, those eyes. She looks like she's ready to destroy me. This nightmare is getting worse by the minute. I suppose all I can do is try to find out what really happened. He, he really has been killed, hasn't he? This isn't just a bad dream? And these handcuffs. They think I did it? They think I'm Cosmo's killer? When they found him, the cabin was locked from the inside! What do you mean? There's no access to the cabin via a porthole window! And the bolt on the door can't be operated from the outside! 
In other words, after the crime, the culprit couldn't have escaped these four walls. What? But to put it another way, the culprit could only have been somebody inside this cabin. Or do you have some other explanation? This is impossible. How did he die then? What happened exactly? Are you still going to deny the charge? Even despite the circumstances? Please, Susato-san, you have to tell me! I mean, I get it, she doesn't like know us, but... I didn't do it, man! I didn't do it! The cause of death is... still undetermined. They don't know how he died? The ship's doctor is examining the body, but of course, he has no post-mortem analysis experience. I don't suppose we shall learn more until an expert has been consulted at our next port of call. So presumably that means there were no obvious external signs of injury then? That's true, yes. Alright, let's learn about the incident. Can't anyone tell me what actually happened here in this cabin? I don't understand it. Why would anybody want to kill Kazuma? Presumably that's something you know the answer to better than anyone. Please. Whatever you say, you were here in this cabin after all. Well, yes, I was, but... I was obviously drugged unconscious and knocked out in the closet, Susato. Like, come on. It's not like I woke up. You guys had to wait for me to wake up. That doesn't seem suspicious to you. Oh, I can't believe he got me in. Uh, context? Context for saying got me in? Mia Fey was Phoenix's mentor in the first game. And she's also the older sister of Maya Faye. You may have seen Maya in other Ace Attorney, like maybe pictures. You just Google Ace Attorney, you're gonna see her. It's the, the girl in the traditional clothing with the, the big bun. Um, and she got murdered. And then the case was that they thought Maya killed Mia and we had to figure it out and there's red, white and stuff. But that, that's what happened. It's like, oh, this is gonna be our mentor for the game. Nope, dead. It's like, oh, come on. I was like, <laughs> call episode one. I'm like, don't. Cosmo's gonna get me and oh my friend. Oh, he's going overseas. I was like, what? Sure, please just send him overseas to the game and then maybe maybe he gets accused of murder and that's that's what we have to do in game number two. Nope, just dead, just dead. He would always wake up before dawn and do his training first thing in the morning. I was waiting outside his cabin, as I have every day so far on this voyage. But this morning, he did not come. I could sense that he wouldn't. Interesting. Does that mean he was already dead when Susanto-san arrived at his cabin door? I wonder. I knocked, but there was no reply. Then I started to become worried, so I went to find a member of the crew. And the crewman forced the cabin door open, and when we managed to get inside... But why would he write in Russian? That makes no sense. This is like how how Red White literally dipped Mia's hand in blood to write out Maya to make it look like Mia wrote Maya to pin it on Maya. He's literally getting mia right now. Literally getting mia there was Kazuma-sama collapsed on the floor. His, his headband to never flow with the wind again. Uh. And the white tape there now shows exactly where he was found, I suppose. I had no idea anything had happened. I must have been asleep in the wardrobe somehow. I wish it wasn't the case, but that's just very hard to believe. This is all very hard to believe for me, too. Trust me, Cosmo is literally dead. I don't know what's going on. And now you're telling me I killed him. I've told you everything that I know. So it's my turn to ask you a question. Yes, all right. Yes! Ugh, my head feels so heavy. It's still throbbing like anything. Let's talk about being a stowaway. Why are you even on board this ship, Naruhoto-san? You said something before about being a stowaway, didn't you? Oh, yes. I'm afraid that's true. It's two weeks since we left Japan now, and I've been shut up in this cabin the entire time. 
I had no idea. But how could you have occupied Cosmos on his cabin for so long without him noticing? No, no, no. That would have been impossible, obviously. Yes, of course. Cosmo invited me. He wanted us to go to England together. He actually asked you? But why? We're friends. I'm afraid. I don't really know the reason myself. Because he loves you. What? Who said that? Who said that? Is that me? Am I the only one uh, reading Yowie subtext here? Or is that just a personal problem? I think it's just a personal problem. But I was like, oh, they're cute. Who's gonna die? Not gonna be Reno's kid because he's the main character. I still- Ah! I don't understand. Cosma, why do you want this? What's the real reason? Why go to such extreme lengths to smuggle me to England with you? He just wants you to hang out, man. Come on. It's an idea that's been on my mind ever since the end of that incredible trial. I think I told you then, didn't I? That you ought to become a lawyer yourself. Well, yes, you did say that. But I didn't think you were serious. You have a talent for it. I can assure you of that. But I've never really thought about becoming a lawyer. Well, that's something you can decide for yourself. London is at the spearhead of cultural development center of the world in many ways. There can't be any harm in seeing such an important place with your own eyes, can there? Well, no, definitely not. But on a personal level, if you were to become a lawyer, then... Then what? Nothing. Forget it. What? Bruh, tell us. Come on, aren't we buddies? Cosmosamas, he was always saying the same thing. That he wanted to change the Japanese legal system. Perhaps he thought that he could do that with you. Yes, maybe. But something's still bothering me a little. It's all Hosuna Hosunaga's fault. He didn't, get to, he didn't get to tell us his request. The look in his eyes, then. It was darker than I've ever seen it before. Um, Susato-san, I'm sorry that we kept it a secret from you. My stowing away on the ship, I mean. If I know kazuma sama I expect he was trying to protect me, to avoid me becoming guilty by association. That's, that's exactly right, yes. Word perfect, in fact. If you're not the culprit, then tell me. What happened last night here in this cabin? Well, the thing is, I don't really remember. Cosmo brought me something to eat, just like he always did. And then I got myself into that wardrobe over there, just like I always did. After that, I... Fell asleep? Er, well, yes. So deeply that you didn't even stir when cosmo and I was killed? Well, yes. So something in the food, then. I know it sounds unbelievable. Really, I do. But it's the truth. If only I'd woken up, then perhaps I wouldn't be in this predicament. And for some reason, my head's still throbbing like anything. Really? Um, is something wrong? Oh, um, no, it's... My head hurts, too. Please, forget it. Maybe nobody remembers what happened last night. Suzato-san, you have to believe me. I didn't do it. I, I really don't want to doubt you. But the trouble is, there's no one else who could possibly have done this. Ugh. Kazuma, I don't understand. Why? Why did this have to happen? Ah, I can't take this. Don't try to go anywhere! You're the perpetrator of this crime! You can't leave! I can't allow that to happen! I'm sorry. 
but Cosmo was killed right under my nose here, and I didn't do anything to stop it. Now I'm supposed to just sit around, my hands tied, while whoever did this walks free? No, I can't allow that to happen. Well, what do you propose to do then? I'm going to investigate. I'm going to find out exactly what happened here. I'm going to work out who took Cosmo's life, and how and why they did it. So I'm sorry, but you're going to have to excuse me. Hiya! We got flipped. What the? That was a Susato takedown! Uh, Susato what? What martial art form is that? I'm going to need you to prove it! Sorry, prove it. Yes, your innocence. I need evidence. But but how am I supposed to? Have you forgotten already what you achieved just a few weeks ago? You successfully defended yourself in a court of law. Ah, I see. She's expecting me to present some conclusive evidence. I have to get Susato-san to believe me. I'll share some evidence right now that proves I'm not guilty of this awful crime. Oh yeah, this was on the wardrobe. He couldn't get out. Yes. Tell me, when I was discovered in the wardrobe before, was this piece of paper stuck over the doors? Oh, yes, it was. I remember clearly. I thought so. Cosmo always put it in place whenever I went to sleep in there. Just in case the cabin steward or another crew member decided to look inside. So naturally, he did the same last night as well. Ah! Yes, of course. The gentleman had discovered you peeled that sign from the wardrobe doors before he opened them. But if I were truly the culprit, I couldn't have climbed back inside the wardrobe and stuck this on the outside of the doors on my own. Yes, that's quite true. In other words, it's impossible that I killed Kazuma. Well, even if you are sprawled hopelessly on the floor, I can see why Kazuma-sama thought so highly of you. Thank you, Susato-san. Now, do you think perhaps you could help me up? That's true, I don't have arms. I can't get up myself. What the heck is that on the floor down here? What is that? No, no, I don't want to look at the history, but wh what is that? That looks like a, an arm. What the heck? Well, in the light of that evidence, I don't see any reason why I should stop you from investigating in here, at least. Thank you. So finally, you believe me? I'm sorry. No. What? I'm not sure yet. I can't rule out the possibility that you used some sort of conjuring trick to put the sign back in position. What does she think I am? A magician? For now, I suggest you investigate as thoroughly as possible in here. I'll do the same. Alright, let's get to work, Susato-san. Please don't misunderstand me. I still have my doubts. Oh. I shall be watching you to make sure you do nothing that might disturb the crime scene. I wouldn't want you using your conjuring tricks to destroy evidence, for example. R right. My, my magic tricks, yes. Well, anyway, I should make a start on investigating in here. Examine everything I can. Kazuma, I swear, I will avenge your death. Let's converse. Alright, we've conversed everything. Examine. What the heck is this down here? No. Alright, I guess I'll start. B is to look around. Oh, the, the angle moves. I see. Alright, nothing wrong with the bed. This is... yes, it's a bell cord contraption, I think. What do you mean, contraption? 
I read about it in a book when I was studying that talked about life in Great Britain. Large households often have bell cords like this, which you can pull to ring a bell to summon servants. Really? That sounds almost magical. Shall we give it a little try? Yes! In the interest of cultural research, obviously! Nobody comes for lowly Japanese people. No, no, I'm sure it's just that everyone is busy, that's all. Poor Susato. Up! Oh. oh dear, that won't do! Oh, what's the matter, Susato-san? Whenever I'm examining things, I always find myself so focused I forget to look around properly. Ah oh, yes, that's not good. I don't suppose you're as foolish as me in that regard, are you, Naruhoto-san? Ah, the tutorial how to move. I'm sure you're careful to look all around using BM, aren't you? Ah, BM. Or I can just point and click. Now, let's investigate all corners of this cabin! We're pointing and clicking. Yes, let's do that. I suppose my field of vision has been rather small until now. It's some two weeks since we set sail from Japan. Have you really been living in that wardrobe the entire time, Naruhana-san? I think living isn't quite the right description. Oh, no, I suppose not. Although it must have been rather exciting making this voyage in your own secret hideout. The trouble was, I never knew when a member of the crew might come in. So yes, I did basically have to live in the wardrobe. And last night was no exception. But because of that, you had no idea what was happening out here in the cabin. No, sadly not. Alright, we checked that. This is checked. Bed had nothing going on. Share. Books. Let's look at some books. This is where dear Kazuma-sama would have sat whenever he was writing. London Diary. Poor Kazuma. He didn't even make it to his destination. It looks as though the last entry is incomplete. Oh yeah, the handwriting. Uh, there at the end. Well, I guess when he's not doing kanji it looks like that. To say maybe he was attacked while he was writing, but it doesn't seem to be the case. Which means, what? He was in the middle of writing it when the incident happened? Let's see what it says. It could be a valuable clue. Hi -ya! That's out of the question. What? Cosmo saw may have departed this world, but you must not read his private thoughts. But but what if it's something important, something relevant to the case? All right, all right, I won't read it. Poor Kazuma-sama. I don't like prying into people's personal matters either. But in this case, isn't the need for clues more important? I didn't actually click on it. It's a very large traveling case, isn't it? Oh, it's the case. I was trying to click on the bottle. Yes, it carries a lot of memories for me. Memories? What do you mean? Well, that's actually how I stood away on this vessel. I was brought on board inside that case. Ah, oh, yes, I see it says this way up in Japanese. Which in hindsight, I should have realized the foreign crewmen wouldn't be able to read. I was turned over and over and over. And then I was tossed on the floor in here. Oh dear, being a stowaway isn't as romantic as it sounds. Well, it was less painful than a Susato takedown. And why is this bookshelf all knocked over? The books have fallen over on the shelf. Look, they've all toppled the same way. That's a little odd. And what's this? A statue of some god of the sea? Although he's fallen over as well. 
Yes, it's almost as if the whole shelf has been ransacked and everything mowed down at once. I wonder if... Perhaps it was Kazuma-sama doing his morning sword training, do you think? I seriously doubt it. And perhaps... It was you, Naruhoto-san, in a fit of rage! I wouldn't have bothered leaving the wardrobe just to mess up a few books and a statue. Could the way these things have been thrown about have anything to do with the case? I wonder. Well, I'll just set everything straight again. I don't like to see a mess. I feel like there's a secret door back there. What does this mean? Secret door in Russian. These are the rules of passage for travel aboard the SS Buria. It's essentially a list of requests from the captain to all passengers on board. Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. Pets are also strictly forbidden. Technically, they had both a sword and a pet in Anuoto. What? Why are you staring at me? Oh, sorry. I was just thinking. Are you more of a dangerous object or a pet? I can't decide. Well, one thing's for sure. Either way, I wasn't supposed to be in here. What's that? That looks like a vent. Killer vented! There's a Among Us reference in my Ace Attorney. He vented! A hole through which fresh air could circulate into the cabin. Isn't that a little odd? What do you mean? Well, this ventilator, if that's what it is, it looks like it must connect to the next door cabin. Yes, it would appear to. You're right. But if its purpose is to allow fresh air into the room, surely it should be connected to the outside. I mean, we're kind of on a boat in Naruhodo, so like, you'd probably let water in. I don't know. Mm, that's true. Perhaps it's so that the rain and spray don't find their way in when the seas are rough. Or something like that? I suppose. Maybe that's it. Somebody could crawl out of there. Susato could fit in there for sure. Alright, we check this all out. We gotta check out Russian text. D did Kazuma write that before he died? It looks like it's written in ink. He must have knocked the ink pot from the desk when he collapsed on the floor. Then I suppose he wrote this message by dipping his finger in the spillage. Poor Kazuma sama. No doubt he was in terrible pain. It's almost unbearable to imagine it. I suppose he was trying to leave some kind of a clue in his final moments, was he? I'm sorry, partner. But I can't read your writing. Why would the Japanese guy leave a message in Russian? I don't think that's Japanese, Naruhoto-san. What? Then, then what language is it? It pains me to admit it, but I don't know. It's not a foreign script I'm familiar with. What does it mean, I wonder? What the heck? How do you get in here? That's it, you're getting punished with Kermit voice. As far as I can tell, it looks like he might be European. Oh, how did he? Look, if he can get in here, somebody else can get in here. That's all I'm saying. You've noticed the man too, have you? Why is he like that? Why? Why are you like that, Herlock? What even is that? Why are you hanging upside down from a desk? Why? I have no idea who he is or how he got in here, but he looks suspicious and tall. Suspiciously tall. Anodasan, don't tell me. Do you really not know who that is? Um, well, no. I don't have any foreign friends or acquaintances at all. He doesn't look like a member of the crew. There's something very unusual about him. Might be that he sounds like Kermit the Frog. And he is investigating Cosmo's desk, or is he playing on it? So I can't tell. Well, in that case, we must simply talk with him. Am I just imagining it, or does Susato-san look almost uncontrollably excited? By the way, I expect that you've noticed already, but just in case... If you press space on people when they're in the crosshairs, you can converse with them. Alright then, I'll get that suspiciously tall gentleman in my sights, and we'll see what he has to say for himself. Oh, please do! 
but I wanna, I wanna, I wanna examine more. Look at this. What is that? I wanna do all my investigating, and then we'll talk to Sher uh, Herlock. Herlock Sholmes. What do you think this is? It looks like a broken piece of glassware. Looks like half a bell or something. Looks like the Taco Bell logo. It's purple. Whatever that thing was, it appears to have broken clean in two. The glass is such a beautiful color. It looks like a cute little Mitsuke fastener from a Komodo outfit. Not sure that sounds like Kazuma. He wouldn't have secretly carried a cute little trinket like this around with him. Would he? And the mark beside it. What is it, I wonder? As a sort of brick-like here. This, this is very dark. Yes, you're right. It's the color brick, isn't it? Even though I don't see anything of the same color anywhere else in the cabin. Alright. Let's go this way. Cosmo's sword. That's Cosmo-sama's precious sword! He never went anywhere without it! Yes, he was always saying that a Japanese man's katana is his soul. I believe he had to work very hard to convince the government to allow him to bring it on this trip. I suppose that shows just how important it was to him. And now he's gone. But I'm not ready to let his spirit go just yet. What the heck is this? Ah, so it is, it is a bone. That's my dinner from last night, a roast chicken. It was really tasty. And probably laced with something. Yes, it was very delicious, wasn't it? But... Did you eat it on the floor here? I'm not a dog, Susato-san. I hate at the table, of course. Which begs the question of... When and how did the plate end up on the floor? The Kazuma-sama didn't like chicken at all, did he? No, that's right. So he didn't touch it. Which meant all the more for me! Oh no! Does, does that mean... Poor Kazuma-sama spent his last night on Earth with an empty belly? It's just too horrible. Ugh, now I suddenly have a guilty conscience and an achy stomach. I wonder if the person came in here to steal something, but Cosmo was the only person that wasn't knocked out. And he had to fight him. And killed him on accident. Maybe he wasn't meant to be killed, but something was meant to be stolen. I don't know. There's a knife. Looked at the knife. No. Over here. What's over here? There's nothing on this table at all! The plate and cutlery all over the floor for some reason. Yes, it's strange. Last night when I went to sleep, I'm sure everything was still... No, wait a minute. What is it? That's funny. I... I can't seem to remember anything about what happened after dinner at all. So then perhaps you are responsible for what happened to Kazuma-sama? No, no, no! Sato, come on! What's this? Got some kanji on the wall. Seigi. Japanese word for justice. The brush strokes are straight and true, just like Kazuma. Yes, his calligraphy was always always was a reflection of his heart. Yet you, can you really look at those characters without feeling shame, knowing who drew them so thoughtfully? Of course I can. I mean, I'm innocent, so why shouldn't I be able to? Even though you stowed away on this ship? Uh, well, it's kind of Cosmo's idea. Now you're going to bring that up, are you? I can't win. I looked at the chair. Anything on the ceiling. Talk to the Russian guy. Perhaps I should see what this Russian crewman makes of the scene of the crime. Um, excuse me. What? I was wondering how it's going. The investigation, I mean. Grandmother told me Japanese people do not make jokes. But it's not true, I see. Sorry? The criminal is asking investigator for information about this crime? Very funny. Oh, it wasn't supposed to be a joke. He doesn't appear to be laughing either. He's convinced you're guilty. He might have useful information, though. I have to keep trying. 
So, last night, did you notice anything out of the ordinary at all? Yet, Of course not! Now back to the corner of the room and make silent! I said no more to you! Hmm, did I hit a nerve? Just for a minute there, he seemed a little flustered. This man don't remember anything either. I don't think- Susato won't say it either. I don't think Susato remembers anything. But I went for help and the crewman forced the door open. This bolt had been firmly closed. Mm -hmm. It's quite a small bolt and not particularly sturdy. And it just slides across to and secure the door shut. But still, with the door bolted, there would be no way to get in or out of the cabin, that's for sure. He vented. Or she vented. They vented. I don't know. It's no wonder everyone suspects me. When she glares at me like that, I feel tense all up and down my spine. I remember reading once in the detective novel. The culprit used a needle and a thread to draw a bolt across from the outside of the room in a situation like this. Yes, that's a clever trick, isn't it? I'm an avid reader of detective stories myself. But the door of this cabin and its frame are made of metal, and they're sealed together perfectly. There would be no possibility of using that needle and thread trick here, I'm afraid. She's like, I read. I read. I'm smart. You think I'm stupid, Naruhoto? When she glares at me like that, I feel pins and needles all up and down my spine. He's like, oh god, I'm dying. Alright, let's... alright, alright. Let's see what this wacko has to say. Oh my god, he looks like a nut job. Um, excuse me? Excuse me, do you have a moment? This is a critical point in my investigation! Maybe I should leave him alone. He seems a little unfriendly. Yes, perhaps that would be for the best. Greetings! I hope I haven't kept you long! Ah! Um, what exactly were you doing on Cosmo's desk just now? Ah, I see! Fascinating! Uh, sorry? And what do you see? Feels like he's looking right through me. Oh yes! Everything is clear now! The train of reasoning has run its course! My deductions have crystallized! You! Have been in Afghanistan, I perceive! Just recently returned, if I'm not mistaken! Sorry? What? And now! Whilst venturing towards foreign climes, you find yourself in a most troubling predicament! Oh, well, that's true, at least. But, but how? How the deuce did I know that, perhaps? It was really a most elementary deduction, hardly worth explaining. Have you perhaps managed to deduce anything else? But of course, a great many things! There is no mystery, my dear madam! For example, you have fled your native land of Russia, being as you are, a merciless revolutionary! Excuse me? <laughs> huh? You leave 16 victims of assassination in your wake, and now travel to England to blow up the Crystal Tower! What? And when the barebone occupant of this very cabin discovered your identity, you ended his life too! Yes! I believe that summarizes the facts beautifully! No need to hide the truth, though! Nothing deceives these eyes! Um, just to be clear, you are talking about me, are you? Certainly I am! Do you see another in this cabin who fits the bill? A Russian assassin with 16 victims to his name? I don't even see one person who fits the bill. He's something else. He's something else. So it's true! It was you who did this to Kazuma-sama! What? What? Susato, 
You listen to that and you're like, yep, that sounds good. <laughs> what? And you're plotting a revolution too. It's shameful behavior, not a son. Absolutely wicked. No, listen, there's no way I. Yeah, yeah. I got Sasato takedowned. Now explain yourself. Tell me everything. This is ridiculous. How could you do it? For pity's sake, open your eyes. I'm not a Russian revolutionary, obviously. Oh, forgive me. And as for you, what kind of deduction was that? You were just saying the first thing that came into your head. Ah, but was I not right? Whilst venturing towards foreign climes, you do find yourself in a most troubling predicament, do you not? I mean, he's got a point. Well, yes, maybe. Ha! Ah, there you have it, you see. What do you make of that, hmm? Well, to be honest... This ship is en route to England, and I'm in handcuffs at the scene of a murder. So, I'm not really sure you could call it deduction. It's more plain observation. Indeed! An observation, my dear boy, is the basis of all deduction! My method is founded upon the observation of trifles! You see, I announce my finding with a brassy certitude! And more often than not, I'm right! Huh. I don't think you introduced yourself. Ah! My apologies! How remiss of me! I curb at the frog! I'm an investigator! I am none other than the greatest detective of the century! Not to men and women the world over! The inimitable Herlock Sholmes! So, so it's really you? The actual Herlock Sholmes? The very same! The inimitable actual Herlock Sholmes! Do you know this man, Susato-san? The most famous detective in the world? Naruhoto-san! Of course I do! There's nobody who hasn't heard of him! I haven't! What planet have I been living on, then? We must ask him what he's deduced! He just deduced that I just came back from Afghanistan as a Russian revolutionary, murdered 16 people, and attacked Kazuma and killed him. So, I don't really trust anything he says. Well, I've worked out the entire case already, I'm sure! Really? Why do I feel uneasy about this? Uh, let's let's converse. Great detective. So you're a great detective, are you? Sorry, what was your name again? Indeed, I am none other than the one and only Herlock Sholmes. Oh, I see. You're German, Herlock? Her was it? No, no, I have no air. I mean, I have hair. Please call me Schultz! You can read all about my exploits in this exciting London publication! Oh yes! Rance Magazine! Full of wonderful short stories and interest articles from Great Britain! I never miss an issue! I have it sent from England especially! That must cost a lot, Susanto. Ah yes, here it is. The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes. So you're the protagonist in a series of short stories, then? Indeed I am! And you've read so many of your own stories, you've started to think you really are a detective? Make no mistake! I am not the poor, deluded fellow you take me for! Your inference is backward! Backward? My trusty biographer record records my greatest detecting achievements and chronicles them in the magazine! You have a biographer, do you? Doesn't everyone? Mine goes by the name of Dr. Wilson! Presently keeping shop in London! Dr. Wilson? Excuse me, Dr. Wilson's dead. I must say, thanks to that publication, I've been fantastically busy of late! Why, this very moment I am returning from Asia, having solved the mystery of a cursed royal crown! I'm even mimicking his body movements, this is wonderful. This is wonderful. Sholmes is wonderful. Really? I can't work out whether I should take this man seriously or not. Deduction, you see! To me is a science! Logical reasoning in its purest form! A science? A science? Really? 
The astute observer notices even the most subtle reactions in his subject. A fret of glance, a twitch of a muscle, a slight inclination of the posture, fingernails, arm sleeves, furrows in the skin. All these things are data. Right. Right. And the trained logician makes deductions from this data in the blink of an eye. The ultimate conclusion is, without fail, the truth! As I demonstrated only a few short moments ago. How can he look me in the eye and claim that? So you see, I have a turn booth for observation and for deduction and fame! That is what makes me the one and only air- no, airlock Solms! Have you managed to deduce anything about this particular case yet? Have I managed to deduce anything, my dear fellow? Who do you suppose discovered the culprit at his most cunning hiding place? That's right! It was none other than the great detective before you now, Mr. Herlock Sholmes! Ah, I see. In other words... In other words, this is his fault. And I'm in these now because of him. When I became anxious about Kazuma-sama this morning, I summoned all the crew members to force the cabin door open. And I concealed myself among their number, gaining entry to the scene of the crime. Yes! Luckily for everyone, the great detective, Herlock Sholmes, was on board. And the handcuffs seemed to be an excellent fit, Mr. Naruhodo. Ah. The very moment I laid eyes on the scene, Two facts were immediately apparent to me! Oh really? Two facts, you say? Two facts. Ooh. Ooh, we got some more speech bubbles. Mr. Sholmes, tell us, please. What two facts were apparent when you came to the, into this cabin this morning? One, there was a dead body! Ah uh, yes, but first, let us be precise. The two facts in question were immediately apparent to me. Yes, yes, I understand, but what were they? Allow me to elucidate! The two facts that I deduced from a mere momentary glance at the scene of the crime were as follows. Number one, the cabin was locked from within, rendering the escape of the culprit out of the question. Number two, the victim was Russian. What? And killed following a dispute with an acquaintance. Hold on, Mr. Sholmes. What made you think the victim was Russian? Because the text isn't Russian. Observe the dying message left by the victim on the floor. That is the Russian word for wardrobe. Do you really think that Kazuma-sama could have left a dying message in Russian? In their final moments, many find their native tongue filling their head. For this young man, Russian. Kazuma was Russian, was he? Initially, I considered Gunnarol may be the name of the killer. A certain Robert Guard, perhaps. But in the interest of thoroughness, I decided it would be wrong not to look inside the wardrobe there, at least. Where you found Mr. Nanahoto sleeping soundly. Quite so! I found you! The renowned Russian revolutionary killer! Why is it that I'm Russian too? I observed that you were wearing the same attire as the victim. In other words, you were acquainted. And if my memory serves, that outfit is the traditional dress of the Russian people. Our school uniforms are the traditional dress of the Russian people? I, I had no idea. And I had no idea that a detective could get something so wrong. I took a photograph of the victim and the message that I might analyze it for possible hidden details. Oh. This. This was taken immediately after the young man was discovered, before the body was removed. Yes, Kazuma had already been taken away when I woke up. This is the first time I've actually seen him like this. Well, that was depressing. Are you alright, Mr. Nanahoto? No, obviously not, Susato. Jeez. 
Oh, um, yes, thank you. I'm perfectly fine. My best friend didn't just die, and you guys didn't say I killed him without me having a chance to even process this information. Hey, here's a picture of his dead body, you Russian revolutionary. This is a dead Russian person. Because apparently I'm a Russian assassin, and like, are you okay, Nano Hood Assassin? No. Do I seem okay? Can I ask you something, Mr. Sholmes? What, Bray? You mentioned Russia before as well, didn't you? You know, when you said I was a fearsome revolutionary fleeing from Russia and all of that? Ah, uh, yes! The train of reasoning that led me to the truth! Would you mind explaining that train of reasoning to me, do you think? Because I'm not, I'm not getting it. What? Certainly! If it interests you! How many times? I'm not Russian and I don't speak. Russian. Erm, um, can we talk about your deduction before the things you concluded about me? I mean, you know, I'm, I'm a Russian assassin and all of that. Ah! The now famously accurate, troubling predicament you find yourself in? Actually, it was the other details that I was more hoping to discuss. You know, the merciless Russian revolutionary and assassin of 16 part? You know that part? Ah uh, yes! The more sordid details! It was a fairly commonplace deduction! What? Here we have this morning's paper! As the main headline reads! Revolutionary violent Bolshevik flees Russia via Shanghai! This vessel made a port call at Shanghai yesterday! In last night, the young Russian was murdered! When was Cosmo a Russian? It sounds like Mr. Sholmes has concluded he was Russian because of what Cosmo sama wrote on the floor. It was a simple act of reasoning to realize that the culprit of this crime was the same merciless revolutionary. One who would kill the very young man who helped him to escape after his true identity was discovered. Yes! You should... You... You violent Bolshevik! No, 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 how could it be me? I don't look anything like this man! Just look at his face! Well, you're a fearsome revolutionary after all! Therefore, you have no doubt learned to revolutionize your appearance as well! I'm having way too much fun copying his movements. Let me hold on, let me... Let me get some of this in here. Ugh, please. We're just gonna have this up for a little bit. And, I might add, your name does not appear on the ship's passenger list! Well, that's because I'm a stowaway. What about the other details? The 16 victims of assassination blowing up the Crystal Tower? Ah, uh, yes! The journalist clearly interviewed the man and printed all those particulars in the article. The deeds this man has perpetrated thus far and those he is plotting. Yes, everything about this revolutionary Bolshevik was included. There could be no mistake. Do, do revolutionaries usually agree to interviews with newspaper reporters? I wonder. What about the part where you said I was just returning from Afghanistan? Also quite clearly stated here in the article. Bolshevik has recently returned after a period of subversive activities in a war-torn region of Afghanistan. Where even is it, anyway? This is Afghanistan place. I don't even know what that is. What is in Afghanistan? Here! Take the paper for yourself! As a little memento of this great deduction! Oh, um, thank you. I've absorbed all that is of interest to me within its pages, but I see no rubbish bin nearby! Alright, cool. Russian newspaper. And! You may find the article on the back page of interest as well! On the back? Cast your eye over it sometime if the interest takes you! Though you may need someone to interpret! It's all written in Russian. I couldn't hope to read it. But I suppose it wouldn't hurt to just glance at the article. Maybe there might be a picture or two? Alright. Let's see what he was investigating. Before we started talking, you are examining Cosmo's desk, weren't you? Cosmo! 
Oh, yes, the victim! Did you notice anything useful? Anything at all? Observe! For a moment, the desktop of the victim! You see that the victim was engaged in printing some text! That totally looks like Russian text, obviously. Duh. Y'all never seen what Russian looks like? It's on the floor, it looks exactly the same. London Diary. Cosmo was keeping notes of the trip. Ah, but... I don't think you should read his private writings. It could upset people. A.K.A. Susato, son. Tragic! Something you want to perhaps elucidate before the act of reading! You, you mean you've read it already? It's my business to know what other people do not! Yes, believe it or not, I know a smattering of Japanese! Oh, I see. Well, you're about to know what a Susato takedown is. Sato-san, aren't you going to throw the detective with one of your trademark takedowns? I'm sorry, Naruhara-san. What on earth do you mean? Life is so unfair. Anyway, to return the matter at hand, namely, this diary belonging to the victim. It would appear the final sentence is incomplete, as if the author were cut short. Tell me, what is the nature of the writing? Pray be precise as to the details. Oh, but I thought you knew Japanese. The smattering, dear boy. The smattering. Sayonara, bonsai, Mikado! Naru naru. I trust you're suitably impressed. This dude. Oh my god. All right. Well, I did the. For you guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna take my face away. I want you guys to have this full experience. Goodbye, face cam. All right, all right. Turn this light off. It's hot. <sighs> Mrs. Dyer is littered with complicated-looking characters, of which I can read precisely none. <laughs> So what was all that showing off about before then? I can't read kanji! <laughs> if you'd be so kind as to show me, I'd be happy to read it to you, Mr. Scholes. Oh my god, Susato. I'm much obliged, my dear madam! She's like, oh my god, he's famous! Oh my god, he's famous! The final entry here in Cosmosama's diary consists of just two short sentences. The first reads, 1.23 a.m. I can hear a faint whistling sound. A whistling sound? These are very deep wa- No. <clears throat> that was a weird Susato combo voice. These are very deep waters! Break, go on! The second sentence reads, 1.35 a.m. What looks like some sort of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. Oh, he got snake. Oh. They get bit by snake? A speckled band? What on earth does that mean? Well, thanks to the intro animation. I know what it means. I have no idea. I've never heard that expression before. The ventilator growl, you say? The man was presumably referring to the other place that people could get in and out of this room, but it's a locked room murder. It's only uh, this, this Russian, this Russian revolutionary found in the closet. To the lattice here on the wall, which connects to the adjoining cabin. Yes, the adjoining cabin. So, I believe I've given you enough to consider for the time being, at least. Sato's so cute. Ah, oh, do you have somewhere to go? Can I come with you? You wanna get married? As it happens, the victim's writings and his diary have piqued my interest. Peaked my interest. The matter warrants further investigation, I believe. And if I'm still too long, the seasickness takes hold. Oh, I suppose. You're thinking of investigating the cabin next door, which the ventilator connects to? Great detectives are a curious breed. Our minds rebel at stagnation. We crave mental ex exaltation. So yes, I intend to investigate. 
Perhaps the truth will become clear soon enough. Do you think perhaps that we could go with you? Mm, no. That would be somewhat complicated. What? But why? A simple glance at your wrist should reveal the answer. Because I'm arrested. Oh, please. After all, you're the prime suspect in this matter. No? There's no point in trying to turn into a question. You're the one who decided I was the culprit in the first place. Whatever do you mean? I have no recollection of naming you as the culprit at any point. Bruh. You must be joking. You, you just said it only a moment ago. Dear me, you are clearly misguided. I would have no cause to say such a thing. Well, actually, Mr. Schultz, I did hear you say that, too. You're quite sure? Well, that's very strange. I wouldn't have said you had the face of a criminal, you know? Not really. So what, you were looking at my knees before? Some great detective you are. Well, anyway, that was then and this is now. What do you, what do you mean? What I mean, sir, is this? If you are the culprit, then you must play the part more convincingly. Roll over and accept your fate. <laughs> now he's just being plain rude. That was rude. All right, Kermit the Frog, I'm gonna go investigate the next cabin. And off he goes, having just laughed in my face. His sense of humor is as twisted as his name. His name is a little messed up. His name is a little messed up. But hold on. What are you just standing there for? Hmm? We must go and investigate the cabin next door as well. Aren't you forgetting something? What about these? There's no way I can hi ya! Yo, Susato take down the handcuffs. Yo, maybe Susato killed him, not just JK, JK, JK. After Kazuma Sama spent his dying moments struggling to leave us a clue, you're willing to give up? You're just going to roll over and accept your fate? Ugh. As if you gave me any choice in the rolling over part. I think we still have some investigation to finish off in here first, don't we? Let's carry on examining what we can in this cabin while we wait for the chance to slip next door. Good idea! The situation doesn't look good for me, but there are still things I can do to help myself. And I owe it to Cosma to do everything I can to find a way out of this and bring the real culprit to justice. Is that... Is something wrong, Naruhoto-san? Yeah, that guy got glasses just like the guy in the newspaper picture. Ooh. Oh no, it's just that crewman standing by the door. I can't help but feeling like I've seen him somewhere before. Sus boy. We have a new sus boy. Last time I thought Hosanaga was the sus boy, but he's just kind of... He was a little special. This Ronikoff. I mean, he was very pure. He was very pure. I liked him, though. First I thought he was actually, like... Bad government... Person. You know, like the... Tampered police guy, but then he's actually just... Oh, they just told me to take her, so I took her. But I stole all... I stole the steaks! The beef steak! So, I, I liked him. I hope we see more of him. Hopefully he's like the uh, the gumshoe of the Chronicle series here. Oh yes, you're right. He does look familiar. Excuse me, sir. Yes? What can I do for you? That was too Kermity. Oh, wait. <laughs> the original sus boy. Oh my god. No way. Bruh. 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 He looks like a schoolboy. Oh my. I recognize that face, but but it can't be. <coughs> it is. I, I didn't know you were here, Inspector Hosanaga. Hello again? What are you doing here? I think that should be my line. I was so stunned when I saw you, my heart stopped. Nearly stopped? 
I hope. I received some special orders to go undercover as a member of the crew aboard this ship. Again? You certainly seem to enjoy undercover work, Inspector. Yes, cosplaying is my hobby. If there's anything I could do to help you, please ask. Can you take these handcuffs off? I never expected to see this man on board. Yeah, not me neither. I was like, oh, maybe it, maybe this is a mysterious killer. He, he's got glasses from the side profile. I was like, oh. You know, that other guy with glasses was cool. I liked him. Oh, wait, it's actually literally just the same person. But perhaps his presence can help me out of this hopeless situation. See, we were able to segue right into this because we had finished clicking on everything before talking to, to Herlock. Some of these special orders. So what are your special orders this time, Inspector? Yes, and why are you dressed as a member of the crew? I'm so sorry. Hmm? This is all my fault. I take full responsibility. For for what? My orders were to act as Asogi-san's bodyguard. It was Minister Justice Jigoku who pushed for this overseas study tour to go ahead. And he entrusted me with ensuring that Asogi-san reached Great Britain without being assassinated. Assassinated? How could that have even been a possibility? Why don't you guys tell me anything? I'm not sure. These are complicated times. There are tensions between the world's greatest powers. Minister Jigoku said we should be prepared for all eventualities. This is incredible. I don't believe it. Kazuma-sama was assassinated? With a snake? Obviously, we couldn't give Asogi-san a visible security escort. Which is why I am undercover now, posing as one of the crew. I see. And I didn't take my eyes off of him the entire time we've been on board. From morning until night. Every day. But I never imagined it would happen here, inside his own cabin. Not here on the first class deck. What about... Lower deck? What about lower What about the lower deck? This is a personal alley meme. Lower deck. I failed miserably at my assignment, and Asogi-san is dead as a result. I'm a disgrace. All I can do is humbly apologize. Inspector. So if there's anything at all that I can do to help now, just say the word. Yo, can we investigate, please? We're doing what we can to investigate Cosmo's death ourselves. I thought you might be. You didn't do it, did you? You're not the killer. Of course not. We'd really like to investigate the cabin next door. Yes, so we need to be allowed out of this cabin. I'm sorry. What? You've been deemed a risk to the ship's safety. If you move to even touch the handle of the, do the cabin door. That guy's gonna kill us. That stormy-looking seaman over there would surely snap your neck in two. Nah, and I'd do it again for free. The killer is asking me questions about the investigation. I suppose. I'm not just a stowaway now. They think I'm a murderer as well. Would it be possible to give me something to work with, do you think? I'm going to need something persuasive. What do you mean? If I had a solid reason why the next door cabin should be investigated, for example, I'd do everything I could to persuade the captain to allow it. Really, I'd lay my life on the line if I had to. But I don't see how. There may be a way. What? Really? You think of how you tried to persuade me of your innocence, Narodasan, by presenting me with a piece of evidence that you already had in your possession. Evidence? It's just the same as when you're in court. You must have done it many times during your trial. Simply select the present panel and choose some evidence that Inspector Hosanaga could use. So evidence that would give us a viable reason to investigate the next door cabin. How about I'm being attacked by a snake? I think that sounds good. All right, yes. I, I think I might know what we can use. Let's see if I can present the detective with evidence he needs to persuade the captain. Do, do, 
do 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 do. Let's go to the court record. All right. I want to examine this. You drew the characters for this paper seal, didn't you, Nato Hana san? They're such bold, vivid strokes you made. You're looking at a man who came aboard inside the trunk. Those brush strokes needed to make a statement. If they'd found me in that wardrobe, those Russians would have hurled me into the freezing cold ocean. I'm sure none of the crewmen would have done anything like that. Hmm, well, I'm not so sure. They would have forced you to wash dishes in the galley until you were on death's door or something like that. Wash dishes until I was on death's door? That's a lot of dishes. Alright, nothing on the back. Alright. Wardrobe. Alright. Let's look at the newspaper. Let's look at this thing. That guy. This sus boy's glasses. I'm afraid I can't read a word of Russian. No, me neither. Me neither. I have no idea what any of this says. The pair of you Flandering is a sorry sight! Allow me to offer some assistance. Where did you come from? The article on the front page of this newspaper is concerned with a fearsome Russian revolutionary, which is you! It reads, Revolutionary villain Bolshevik frees Russia via Shanghai! Yes, you told us that before. Also, where did you come from? And also, it reveals also that those who see the man's beard with their own eyes never live to tell the tale. Oh my goodness, he is fearsome! Well, presumably the newspaper photographer was alright, wasn't he? The solution is obvious, of course! If he despises his beard to that degree, he need only shave it off! I'm, I'm not quite sure that's the problem, Mr. Sholmes. Why can't I turn it this way? Uh, what's this? Hmm, this is interesting. Have you found something relevant, Naruhuda-san? Well, no, I just... I mean, it looks like it might be interesting. I can't read a single word, I'm afraid. No, nor can I. But look at this picture. Perhaps it's about a beautiful young Russian princess, do you think? She's very pretty, isn't she? I suppose you enjoy articles like this, do you? I, I, I don't know. I can't make any sense of it. Uh, I'm glad you've noticed this article. Ah! Where do you keep coming from? Allow me to give you a short summary of its contents. I imagine he's just hanging upside down from the ceiling. He just appeared. Oh, thank you. He pops up everywhere, this Mr. Sholmes. He actually is just straight up just appearing. This is great. Top tier character. It's about the disappearance of a young lady last night. Renowned prima ballerina of the Novavitch Ballet disappears from Shanghai. During a performance in Shanghai, the famous dancer was reported missing. She is of course the talented young Nikolina Pavlova. Why are Russian names so hard to remember? It would appear the woman it was in costume when she was found missing from her dressing room. Wearing the diamond tiara you see pictured, which is worth some 20,000 rubles. That's a lot of rubles. You know, how much is 20,000 rubles? That's a good question, though. I have no idea, but I'm quite sure. It must be an unbelievable sum of money. Susato-san's eyes are shining like diamonds themselves. Tiara is the property of the Novovich Ballet. And I would seem the director is beside herself with worry. Oh no, my tiara is missing. I don't care about my ballerina. Worthless. I need my money back. Yes, I'm not surprised. The company is most anxious to recover both Miss Pavlova and the valuable tiara. They've requested international assistance in all ports, with sailings to Great Britain. Could this be another case of a Russian fleeing his or her country? It does seem to be the Russian thing to do. I'm not even going to dignify that with a response, Mr. Naruho. I think that's it. Let's look at Cosmo's diary. Alright, can we uh, examine this? Alright. Uh, 
right, something dangling from the ventilator grill. And, oh, ballerina article got added by itself. All right. Let's, uh, let's go back. I'd like to present. I always love presenting Phoenix's badge. Let's present the, the pin. Oh, wait, no. I want to present the pin. Inspector, can I show you this? What the? Is that a fabled Imperial UMA University pin badge? I'm um, not sure if it's really fabled exactly, but... So, you're a genuine student, then. Sorry? Nothing like me with my regular schooling. You're something much greater. Is that what you were trying to say? Um, can I have my badge back, please? Alright, let's give him um, this thing. What's that? It's Cosma's diary. Just before he died, Cosma Sama wrote something rather strange in his diary. Strange? In what way? He wrote, what looks like some kind of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. A speckled band? A speckled band? That is strange. Yes, we're still trying to work out what he meant by that. But what I'd like to know is... Don't tell me. The ventilator, is it? You're very astute, Inspector. That, vent that ventilator clearly joins the dynamic to the next door cabin. That was a string of words that wasn't was on screen. That's right, so if we could investigate in there, we might be able to work out what that speckled band was. Alright then. I can't leave this cabin at the moment. I'm stuck here until we arrive at the next port. The captain has given me strict orders to guard the scene of the crime, you see. I'll have to entrust the investigation to you. Really? You're willing to do that? Yes. As long as you don't leave the first class cabin area. I'm afraid I can't remove those handcuffs, though. But what about the captain? Aren't you going against his direct orders? <coughs> I'm a man of my word. And I promise you that I'll lay my life on the line if that's what it takes to convince the captain. After all, I failed to keep Asogi-san safe. This is the least I can do. Thank you. Let's seize the moment then, naruhoto san Just select move and we can leave the cabin at last! Move. Alright, let's see what we can find out. It's early in the morning. I mean, Susanto did say that Cosma gets up at the butt crack at dawn to do his sword practice, so I guess that makes sense, but... 9th of January, 7.48 a.m. SS Buria, first class cabin passageway. Woo! I'm finally out of that cabin. I have to admit, this isn't quite what I, was, what I was expecting. It's less spacious out here than I thought it would be. And this is the most luxurious accommodation. Yes, indeed! cosmos was being sent on the study tour by the government. That's why he was being put up in a first-class cabin. Even still, this is about twice as large as my accommodation in steerage. Really? That must be awful. Oh, look over there. That's another crewman keeping watch. And he looks enormous, even if he's sitting down. The door next to him leads to the second-class accommodation. I suppose he's making sure that no one comes in here who shouldn't. I suppose. Like people in handcuffs? Then Huda-san, you look like a little boy visiting a toy shop for the first time. I would have thought you'd be used to the ship by now. We've been at sea for two weeks already. Well, yes, I know, but the thing is... I was inside Cosmo's trunk when I first came aboard. And ever since then, I've been shut up inside that little wardrobe. It must have been a very trying time for you. Please, don't give me that pitying look. 
Come on, Susanto. We've got other things to worry about. But yes, it was absolutely horrible. It was horrible. I want to look around out here. What's this? This looks like a plan of the SS Burria. It shows each deck. Look. Burria is a large-scale steamship with a triple-skin hull. What a marvel of engineering! Well, it's been playing on my mind for a while now, actually, but... How is it that such a huge lump of metal just doesn't sink to the bottom of the ocean? Oh, that's really quite simple, Naruhoto-san. It is? Well, consider the Japanese archipelago. Islands of Japan? Yes. They're not metal, but they are enormous lumps of earth. Many, many times larger than this ship. And they don't sink, do they? They've been floating happily on the sea since the gods created them. Well, I suppose so. Alright, what's this book? That's a huge book on top of the table there. And there's a pen next to it. It's a guest book. I don't know. Yes, that looks like the ship's log. Shall we have a little look through it? It's in Russian. Can't read it. The writing is so neat and precise. Every detail about the voyage has been meticulously recorded. Hmm. You wouldn't expect a rough and ready sailor to have such beautiful handwriting. And nothing. No reaction at all. I thought he might appreciate the compliment. I'm not sure that rough and ready is much of a compliment, Naruhoto-san. Even to a sailor. Anyway, last night's log is mostly blank. Presumably that means there is nothing to report. Captain's log. Alright, anything on the wall here? Why is this light out? Nothing. This is the door. Let's click on him. Um, excuse me, but could I ask you something? You? You little stowaway murderer? That's not a Russian accent. Oops. That wasn't a good start, was it? Alright, let me try instead. Good day, Mr. Sailor. I'm so sorry to trouble you, but could I perhaps ask something of you? You? You little third class lady maid? That's rude. Oh. We seem to have caught the sailor on a bad day, Susato san. I am not sailor. My mother gave me name. I am senior crewman. Biff strong enough. Whew. The best thing is just to avoid eye contact, I think. Um, Mr. Stroganov, about this first-class cabin area. Here we are in finest part of Buria Steamship for very important persons. What sort of very important persons? Government officials, kings and queens traveling in secret. Many important persons. That is why I'm always guarding this place. Gosh, that's amazing. But somehow I let stupid stowaway inside. I want to pick you up and throw you in ocean. But Storganov is not animal. Thank you. If I may, I was wondering, is the cabin next to Mr. Soki's currently occupied? Da! Ah! I can do that Russian. Um, Susato-san, did you understand that? It sounded like, da! I think it's probably Russian for yes or no. Genius. It is not permitted to visit other cabins without invitation. Well, it sounds like there is somebody in the next door cabin, at least. Yes. It's tantalizing. Home's broken, though. That means we could just walk in there, right? Could you tell us who's traveling in the cabin next to Mr. Osoki's? His name is Mr. Grimesby Royalot. Grimesby Royalot. Grimesby Royalot. Crimes by Roylot. Crimes by Roylot? Roylot? Roylot. Grimes be Roylot. Hmm. Hmm. Not sure. Not sure on the meme on that one. He is a very important Western gentleman. A Western gentleman? Do not think about it. He had nothing to do with murder of student boy. How can you be so sure about that? 
And the Roy Lot is authentic Western gentleman. Such a man would have no interest in lowly student from insignificant Far East islands. That was harsh. Could you tell us when Mr. Roy Lot came aboard? That is not your business. Come to think of it, even though we've been at sea for two weeks now, and I've been in Cosmo's cabin the entire time, I've never once heard anything from the next door cabin, or even felt like there's anyone there. Well, presumably, since this gentleman is occupying one of the first class cabins, he must be rather important. Isn't that right? That is not your business. Um, are you on watch here all the time, Seaman Stroganov? That, all the time. So criminals like you cannot come in or get out. I wonder, could you tell us anything about last night at all? It is sad about student boy. It is, it is very sad. Were you on watch last night as well? Of course. And did you notice anything at the time? Anything unusual? Yet! I don't know what that was. Um, Susato-san, did you understand that? It was- oh, that was a nyet. That was a nyet. It was clearly a no! I saw nothing unusual. Nothing at all. I didn't hear any strange noises or sense anything was wrong in some way. You want, you want, you want to make some eye contact with me? You want to look at me in the eye and say that nothing was wrong? You want, you want to look at me and say that you didn't see anything weird? I said no. Sorry. I'm not so sure. I could have sworn that he wouldn't catch my eye for a moment there. A little bit, a little bit. Mr. Big and Strong. Enough to make it rush it. Russian. This isn't enough. I cannot say more now. Oh. It is time for me to report to Captain. You must return to cabin. Yes, alright. Bulkhead to second class area is staying locked at all times. You escape when the lobster whistles on top of the mountain. Or as English say, when the pigs fly. Yes, I understand. Good. Now we can investigate this area properly, shall we? Definitely. Alright. Examine. Let's look at that door. That's the way to the second class area of the ship. Is something wrong? I was thinking about making a run for it, just for a moment. Things aren't exactly going well for me. I might be wrong, but I imagine the moment you reach for the handle of the door, that burly seaman would surely shoot you dead. Oh dear, I'm sorry. Perhaps I went a little too far there. No, I started it with my talk of running away. And there's no way I could run away while Kazuma's death remains a mystery anyway. What about this chair? Anything with the chair? No. Ceiling? No. Railing? No. Under the table? I don't know. Uh, B. Move to this area. The alarm system. What do you think this is? It's a very pleasing shape, isn't it? That's the emergency alarm. It's probably best not to touch it. Oh, an alarm. It says, press only in times of emergency. It looks as though it sets alarm bells ringing all over the ship. And it brings the vessel to a complete stop. Oh, this I have to see. What are you doing, Noruhasan? You mustn't touch it! But this is an emergency situation. Just look at these handcuffs. You know full well that's not what the alarm is for. If you were to bring this vessel to a standstill for no good reason, you'd be in an even worse situation. Ah, uh, I wish everything would just stop. This ship included. Naruhoto is tired of this ship, my friends. If you have to do something foolish, at least make it something that doesn't affect anyone else. What about this weird mousetrap? Ah, a trap for catching mice! Oh, it is actually a mousetrap. Interesting. Yes, we have plenty of those back home in Japan. Although they seem to be using a lump of chalk or something as bait. Let me see. Yes, I think that's what this is called. Cheese. 
made from the milk of cows. Cheese? I wonder what that tastes like. Yo, someone get my boy some cheese. Cheese is life. Ryunosuke's never had cheese. Oh, this is almost as sad as Kazuma's death. Somebody get this boy some cheese. Let me get him some cheese. You can't eat it, Naruhodo-san. The trap will snap shut on your fingers. Really? But... Uh... I suppose you're right. Let me get this boy some cheese. You weren't actually going to try it, were you? All I've had to eat for the past couple weeks is Kazuma's leftovers. You don't know how hungry I've been in that wardrobe. Poor you. I'll find you a little snack for you later. This boy wants some cheese. That's all that's left is click on us at the door. First class cabin number one. Yes, that's our cabin. Not our cabin. It's Cosmo Summers. Sorry? Your accommodation is confined to the wardrobe inside the cabin. You know how to make a stowaway feel small, don't you? As small as the wardrobe I've been calling home. Oh, so it's the other door. Okay. Why do we have a mousetrap in front of our door? That's kind of weird. These cabins are the finest on the ship. My own cabin in steerage is number 539, by the way. 500 and... How many cabins are there? It's a lot of cabins. This is it. This is the cabin next to ours. The one with the ventilator connects to. Yes, the ventilator from which Kazuma-sama wrote that he saw a speckled band emerging. Maybe whoever's in this cabin can solve that particular mystery. Let's ask. Let's ask. Be like, yo, excuse me. No answer. We're out of luck, it seems. There's no one in there to help with our inquiries. How annoying. Ah! What was that? It came from inside the cabin. Such a high-pitched scream! It must have been a woman! Stand aside! Oh. Stand aside! I'm about to break the door down! Mr. Shubes! I shan't be stopped! When the fit is on me, I revel in kicking doors off their hinges! Please, wait, Mr. Shubes! The door doesn't appear to be bolted! It doesn't? Then how the deuce can I dispatch this muscular urge? What? Pray can I get? I think we should go in. There, there's no time to think about stress relief. I just want to kick something! No. Oh. Hello there, Russian assassin. But who are you? No, oh, Western gentleman. This man looks Russian to me. We we heard a woman scream. A woman? That's too Kermany. Hmm. Don't be absurd. As you can see, there's nobody but me in this cabin. All the Russian people sound the same. My apologies, everybody. True, this old man does not appear the does appear to be the only person in here. But in that case, who just screamed? Get out! All of you! No! Please excuse the intrusion, but... You Mr. Grimesby Roylock, I believe? Yes, that's me. And you are... I am the one and only, the actual Herlock Holmes! You've heard of me, no doubt! No! I am a great detective among great detectives! One who adorns the covers of popular magazines, no less! So I assure you, you may trust me completely! The man uses that magazine like a business card. A detective. Hmm, I do not trust detectives. We distinctly heard a scream emanating from within these walls. But there wouldn't appear to be a lady concealing herself within the wardrobe this time. So might I be so bold to ask you to open that small traveling case? What? Don't be stupid. How could anyone fit in a small throat like that? Well, it's quite fashionable these days, is it not? Traveling inside one's trunk. Don't look at me. Oh my! Did you did you see that, Mr. Nanahoto? Yes! 
The case just shook! Leave! Now! Otherwise, I'll call the steward! So this is Kazuma's neighbor, Mr. Grimesby Roylot. There's no doubt about it. This strange Russian man is hiding something. I couldn't agree more. Let's see if we can find some clues before that burly sailor returns. Can we, can we talk to him? Mr. Roylot, we'd like to talk to you about something. No! Oh. I do not want to talk! Leave my cap- now! Ugh, this is going terribly. We're not getting anywhere here! I agree. There may be someone else who can help. Bruh. What are you doing? Perhaps that great detective could get somewhere with Mr. Roylot. It's just gonna end for the same answer. Ah, uh, okay. Well, let me click on all three. Just so they get check marks. Yeah, it just gives me the same thing every time he doesn't want to talk to us. He's just in the clock. He's something special. Alright, let's go back. Let's examine. This is my cabin! Get out! Could we just have a quick look inside your traveling case, perhaps? No! Uh, what a pity. I think we're out of luck. I think you're right. There doesn't appear to be anything more we can do. I agree, but there may be someone else who could help. Perhaps that great detective could get somewhere with Mr. Roylock. Click on him. Um, do you have a moment, please, Mr. Sholmes? You need only address me as Sholmes! That's what I just did, isn't it? Well, um, Mr. Sholmes, what were you doing in there? Why, I was resting, of course! Resting? Indeed! I was contemplating our sea voyage from the confines of the wardrobe whilst waiting! Waiting for the inevitable time! That you would need to call my great powers of detection into service. Oh! And it would seem that the hour is upon us now! The time has come! Am I mistaken? Well, um, no actually. You're spot on, for once. Observe closely! Your Russian host in this cabin, Mr. Roylot, is clearly trying to hide something! And do you know what the most effective weapon to use against a Russian hiding a secret? Why? The truth, of course! Though it should be pointed out that such methods are not exclusively for the Russians! Right... Can you imagine how the Russian will react when the secret he guards so closely is exposed? Would you like to witness it? Oh yes, please! Well then! What you're about to see may well astound you! For I'm about to apply my great detective's greatly admired great deduction to the case! I, Kermit the Frog, am gonna lie about this Russian to his face! Could this man be a more hackneyed portrayal of dubious Russian, I ask you? What? From, from time to time it occurs to me! Is the fellow dubious on account of his Russianness, or Russian on account of his dubiousness? Dude, it's a good question, though. Does he look suspicious because he's Russian, or is he Russian because he looks suspicious? Yes, yes. He look he looks suspicious, but which part is it? The fact that he looks like the guy in the newspaper that's wanted for a lot of assassinations. Or is it because he's Russian, he looks like that guy and we think he's suspicious? I don't believe this guy's real name is Grimes. Or Grimesby. I I really don't think either of those things should be occurring to you or anyone. That's kind of racist, Herlock. Why would you say that? 
That's right! And Mr. Sholmes! I know this man's beard and dark glasses are hard to ignore, especially on first meeting, but once I read... It is a capital mistake to theorize before you have all the evidence. It biases the judgment. Shh, I must have complete silence! He's thinking real hard. Oh, he's thinking so hard right now. What are you doing? Why are you appearing at my face like that? Ah, just as I thought. Yes, I have quite made up my mind now. Hmm? There can only be, be there can be no other explanation that accommodates all the facts. Mr. Roylock, I have reached two incontrovertible conclusions. What? What do you mean? Number one, your true identity is that of a villain. Using those shears, you're about to end the existence of something most dear. Are you not? Huh? And number two, the other conclusion I've drawn, you are, at this very moment no less, in the midst of committing a most grievous crime. Beneath that beard, your mouth quivers with nervous tension as you realize you've been discovered. Does it not? Ah. Oh, Narahura-san! I never imagined I would witness one of Mr. Sholm's great deductions with my own eyes. That was a great deduction? Nothing can deceive Mr. Sholmes. In a single glance, he can deduce all there is to know about a person. What? One ineffable twaddle. Oh yes, I've read about it countless times in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes. And now I've experienced the astonishing impact of his great deduction firsthand. This is like a dream come true. I could hardly believe it, but all the color is drained from Mr. Roylott's face. It looks like somehow both of Mr. Sholmes' conclusions were right. How? How could you? How could I possibly know such things? You wish to say? Very well then. I shall elucidate. I shall explain how it was that I arrived at this pair of conclusions. So I do cordially invite you upon a journey of logical discovery. Let us board the train of reasoning. Put plainly, let us work through my deductions together. The Great Deduction, the game is afoot. Topic one, old man's identity. So, the dubious looking Russian Mr. Roylott, obviously what catches my eye in the first place is the enormous pair of shears in your hand. He's got crumpled up newspaper in his pocket too. Now we ask ourselves, what could you possibly want with such an implement? This is actually really cool looking. The answer of course is staring us in the face. You are on the verge of using the shears to cut away the copious beard you sport. Now moving on. The question that begged is this. Why would you desire to rid yourself of this magnificent beard, Mr. Roylott? Once again, the answer is plain. We have clear evidence to shed light on the matter. This much Kermit voice is actually very difficult. It, it takes all of my air out of my lungs. Regard, if you will, this morning's newspaper, in particular the fascinating front page article, which it would appear you have read also, Mr. Roylott. Maybe, maybe each Herlock here is actually a secret genius. I'm sure it needs no further clarification. The evidence that reveals your true identity is the article about the revolutionary. In translation, the headline reads, Revolutionary Violent Bolshevik Flees Russia Via Shanghai. As you cannot fail to observe, the subject of the article possesses an extremely copious beard. Have you noted the article yourself? You decided to remove your incriminating facial hair before it gave you away. In short, your true identity is beyond doubt. You are the fearsome Russian revolutionary himself. Violent Bolshevik! 
You know, if he just says every single person is Borshevik, eventually he will be right. Just glocks up to people. I came at the front! Have to deduce that you were Russian revolutionary assassin Borshevik! Eventually he'll just be right. Not that I've heard of you myself, you understand? A revolutionary on the run. Okay. Second topic here is wrongdoing. No, that's for my second conclusion. You are, at this very moment, on the brink of committing a most grievous crime. And the proof of this crime? Over there! Oh yes, Mr. Roylock! Take it unawares, people has a propensity to let their eyes stray, you see? And I assure you, you know I speak much more eloquently and honestly than the mouth! The answer we seek lies where the furtive glance falls! The proof of your crime sits before our very eyes! Yes, that traveling case! It's time, I think, that the case be opened and its contents laid bare! No, I refuse! What could you possibly be concealing inside, we ask? By my estimation! A young lady, perhaps! One slight enough to fit therein! Just fold up the ballerina and shove her in the case, right? Easy. Don't, don't be absurd! And what, pray, would be the identity of this young lady in the traveling case? Near me? We are not well suited to a life of crime, are we? Your Kayla's coupe de betrayed you. Your coupe of the eyes. Interesting. Once again, we only need to follow your furtive glance to find the answer. Yes, the reason you refuse to open your traveling case can be equally found in the pages of this newspaper. For there is another most stimulating article. If we turn from the fleeing revolutionary to the back page. Renowned prima ballerina of the Novovich Ballet disappears from Shanghai. Such a headline can lead us to but one conclusion. Your crime is that of abduction. And according to the article, the young lady's name is Nikolina Pavlova. Kidnapping of a young ballerina. Thus concludes Erlok Sholm's great deduction of this Russian enigma, Elementsky! Shisato-san, that wasn't one of the great deductions I've been hearing so much about, was it? Well, um, the stories are full of Mr. Sholm's prank deductions, you know? But that did seem a little different somehow. Excuse me, Mr. Sholmes, could you come over here a moment? Bray, what can I do for you? It's about your deductions. Would you mind? Not at all. Go on. Well, to start with, there's a newspaper article. I think we had the same discussion before, but... These two men look nothing like each other. I mean, they do have a similar beard, but... Now, oh, yes! I recall our discussion earlier, and at the time, I believe I told you... ...that the man is a revolutionary! Well, able to revolutionize his own appearance! In fairness to Mr. Sholmes, Mr. Roylott does look more like this man than you do. That, that's, that's not the point. And another thing, the part about him abducting the ballerina. Indeed! A truly startling revelation! At first glance, that case would appear to be too small to accommodate a young woman. Not just at first glance, it is too small, clearly. You'd be lucky to fit a five-year-old child into that case, even if you pushed really hard. I don't suppose the missing ballerina is a five-year-old child, is she? You mean you don't know? No, 
Oh, the young lady is 15! No, I, I didn't know. How could I? I don't even know who you are. Mm, well, and she's 15. And 10 years worth of her would be poking out from the case. Some years ago, I read something pertinent, I believe. A troop of men consuming vinegar daily in order to promote a certain lightness in their bodies. Vinegar? For such a sour bunch, it would surely be simplicity itself to contort oneself into the confines of that small case. Oh dear, you might be thinking of contortionists in the circus, Mr. Sholmes. Ugh, this whole thing is turning into a circus. Mr. Nowerhodo, something's occurred to me about Mr. Sholmes' deductions just now. I think his powers of observation are, well, magical. His eyes cut to the heart of a matter almost instantly. It's just where he directs his attention and his logic that seem a little off. Your idea of a little may be a little off itself, Miss Susanto. It's just one or two keywords in his deductions that seem to let him down. So I was wondering if we might perhaps tactfully switch them for alternatives. What do you think? Hmm, switch some keywords in his deductions. Yes, but very tactfully. I'm sure if we could do that, we'd unlock the true genius of Mr. Shulm's great deduction. Precisely the thought I was going through in my own mind. This man is a lot of work. At times, I wonder how anyone puts up with me. <laughs> it's not that funny. Ah, and you, my good fellow. Sorry? Take a moment to look at your wrists. My wrists? I swear Sherlock, or Herlock here is just... Herlock is... This man is something else. Huh? Wh where are your handcuffs? Huh? How, how did... I felt they may hinder your ability to follow me in our dance of deduction. I don't believe it. Mr. Sholmes, you are a marvel. And don't worry. I shall restore the shackles to your wrists when we are finished. I'm not worried. In fact, I'd rather stay like this. So, let us begin. Herlock Sholmes is proud to present his logic and reasoning spectacular. Course correction. Hold it, Mr. Sholmes. All right. I'm curious how this is gonna go. As soon as we can we can look at the text history, we can look at the court record, and we can look at options. Okay. So, dubious looking Russian, Mr. Roylon, obviously what catches the eye in the first place is the enormous pair of shears in your hand. Now we ask ourselves, what could you possibly want with such an implement? The answer, of course, is staring us in the face. You're on the verge of using the shears to cut away that copious beard you sport. Mm, I'm not sure. Would you really use shears like that to cut off a beard? I doubt that's something I'll ever have to worry about. It doesn't quite sit right with me, though. It doesn't seem to be sitting right with Mr. Roylott, either. Which means, I suppose, that the deduction is wrong. Let's try to switch a key word here, Narohoro-san, and see if it helps matters. Alright, but how? I think we should start by taking a long, hard look at Mr. Roylott. I wonder if it's really his beard he intended to use those shears on. Exactly. If we do manage to find something that seems to fit the sense of Mr. Shull's deduction better... Then what? Then I'll leave the rest to you. I'll leave the rest in your capable hands, Narohoro-san. Why am I the one to do something about this? Well, anyway, let's see if there's anything we could even use to switch around in that last sentence. What exactly was Mr. Roylott really going to use those enormous shears for? What was the old man really about to cut? There's a plate on the ground. Cut his hair. This man has a lot of hair. This man's got a lot of hair. Let's present yes. some hair. The, the beard's fake. 
Yeah, this is sweet looking. You're on the verge of using the shears to cut away those golden locks you sport. Indeed! You have identified the precise detail I was intending to expose. So this lush golden hair certainly does not benefit or befit an old man. You're not a man at all. You're a woman. And judging from the length and sheen of your hair, still one very much her youth. Oh, is she the ballerina? If only I had managed to cut off my hair, no one would have suspected. Uh, that's still too Kermity. The question then begged is this. Why would you desire to rid yourself of these magnificent locks? Once again, the answer is plain. We have clear evidence to shed light on the matter. I'm sure it needs no further clarification. The evidence that reveals your true identity is the article about the revolutionary. No, it's the other article. Well, that was a shock. I had no idea that old man was really a young woman in disguise. Did you? What? Why are you staring at me like that? Yes, it was a surprise, Marahura-san. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Sorry? You look like you're in your element as you dance around the room deducing the facts of Mr. Sholmes. I'm just doing what we agreed. I'm, I'm not having fun or anything. Gosh, Susato, why would you think I'd ever have fun in my life? This is just business. Yes, yes, I understand. Say no more. Well, anyway, let's focus on the next part of Mr. Sholmes' deductions, shall we? The evidence that he's picked out doesn't fit the facts at all now. No, that's true, given that Mr. Roylott is actually a woman. Exactly. He, or rather she, can't possibly be this merciless revolutionary. I suppose it's because the deduction as a whole has taken a different direction now. Yes. Let's switch the evidence for something else. Something that fits the facts as we now understand them. For some reason, this woman needed to try and hide her true identity. I feel as though we've either read or heard about a young woman in a situation like that recently. Alright, I'll do my best. Yes! Yes! The evidence that reveals your true identity is, of course, the article about the ballerina. That That's right! You've hit the nail on the head! Renowned prima ballerina of the Novovich Ballet disappears from Shanghai! But appear we are finally able to address you by your true name! Yes! Because your true identity is that of the Novovich Ballerina... Novovich Ballet's prima ballerina! Miss Nikolina Pavlova! Ooh, her earring is pretty. You're right! No, that's a... That's a Susato voice. My real name is Nina. I mean, Nina Pavlova. But please, I beg you, don't tell anyone. Well, that's true, you can't kidnap yourself. No, as for my second conclusion... You are, at this very moment, on the brink of committing a most grievous crime! And the proof of this crime, over there! Oh yes, Miss Pavlova! Take it on awareness, people have a propensity to let their eyes stray, you see? Ah! And I assure you, the eyes speak so much more eloquently, and honestly, than the mouth. The answer we seek lies with the furtive glance falls. The proof of your crime sits before our very eyes. Yes, that traveling case. That's not the case. This woman is the ballerina, and she's right in front of our eyes. So clearly she can't be inside that traveling case as well. No, that's right. Seems she wasn't abducted at all. 
which case, what is the crime this young woman is apparently committing? Huh, I can see I'm going to have to step in and fix the great detective's mistake again. You seem to look pleased, Naruto-san. Do you like the idea of another chance to dance around with Mr. Sholmes? Stop it! Anyway, there must be something else here that shows what this woman is up to. Look at this dazzling tiara. I've never seen anything like it. Are those real diamonds, do you think? Oh, not a Hodosan, try it on. What? Me? Isn't it usually girls who wear tiaras? Wouldn't you like to try it on? Oh no, I couldn't possibly. It's far too beautiful. Why does this tiara look familiar? I feel like I've seen it somewhere recently. Proof of your crime is surely this tiara. Ah! I believe this tiara is worn on stage by dancers in the Novovich Ballet, is it not? Indeed! It would appear to be identical to the tiara pictured here in this newspaper article. And if the reporting is to be believed, it's an item worth 20,000 rubles! In summary, The crime you have committed is theft. Oh no! Yes! You left your ballet troupe unlawfully taking their precious tiara with you! Ah! I have no one, no family, no friends. I am all alone, and I need money! But I did not steal the tiara! It was a present from, how do you say, an Earl of Prussia? It belongs to me. This girl is only 15 years old and she's a runaway all by herself. She must have been extremely lonely. All right, I will tell you everything. There is no point to hiding it now. Come, come, let us not be hasty. What? There remains one unsolved mystery about you! Mystery? What, what do you mean? You have staunchly refused to open this traveling case of yours in your presence. It is reasonable to conclude, therefore, that there exists some reason why you wish it to remain closed. Is that not so, Miss Pavlova? Um... My dear... My dear girl, there is no sense in playing games with me! Nothing escapes my attention! Indeed, I have a very good idea of the contents of your case, even before I've ever laid eyes on them! Dear me, we are not well suited to a life of crime, are we? Your careless coup day betrays you! Once again, we only need to follow your furtive glance to find the answer! Yes, the reason why you refuse to open your case is written in the books on the shelf! He's completely changed tack with his deduction now. I think Mr. Sholmes is adapting his logic to the changing circumstances, don't you? Maybe, but why has he suddenly brought up the bookshelf into all of this? It's just a wild guess, surely. Oh, do you think so? Well, it doesn't seem likely that the reason why this young woman doesn't want to open her case would have been written in a bookshelf that doesn't even belong to her. Yes, that's true, but still... Miss Pavlova certainly did cast her eyes in that direction. I noticed it myself. Then there has to be another reason why she won't open her case. And it must be somewhere in the same area if that's where her gaze was involuntarily drawn. I agree. That's the only answer. And whatever she has hidden inside that case should be revealed by following her gaze in the direction of the bookcase. It's a small picture. This is a charming little picture, isn't it? What is it? Someone climbing a steep mountainside? A descending one, it seems to me. You've been on the flat sea for a while. Maybe you start seeing hills and mountains and everything. Alright, it's so not that. Well. Wow. 
These are the rules of passage for travel aboard the SS Boria. Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. Pets are also strictly forbidden. Oh, maybe she has a pet snake. There was exactly the same notice in our cabin, too. I wonder what happens if you break the rules? Oh dear! I'm sure the punishment would be severe, Narohuro-san. You'd probably be left to drift in the freezing cold ocean. We're shut inside a tiny wardrobe for days on end. So I've actually been serving time for weeks now, have I? Yes! Yes, the reason why you refuse to open your case is written in the rules of passage. Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. Pets are also strictly forbidden. Inside that case of yours is something forbidden from carriage on this vessel. That is the real reason why you refuse to open it, thus revealing its contents. I... As we've seen, the truck wobbles from time to time, but no weapon or other dangerous item would move of its own accord. Which leaves but one possibility, Miss Pavlova, inside your traveling case! Is the last item listed as forbidden in the vessel's rules of passage? A pet! I was thinking maybe Cosma died to the snake, but doesn't seem right. So clearly, you aren't who you said you were. No, I am not Grimesby Roylot. My real name is Nikolina Pavlova. Everything you said was correct. You absconded during one of your ballet company's performances in order to escape your homeland! Later that same night, you stole aboard this vessel! Which couldn't have been easy. The Buria is a huge steamship with a vast crew. Could she really have snuck on board without being noticed? In order to obscure your true identity, you somewhat recklessly took the guise of an old gentleman! Then you intended to sever all links with your past by severing your long hair! Yet to a woman, hair is no trifling matter. My personal recommendation is to leave well alone. So, if it was just you, about to cut off your own hair, who was it that let out the scream we heard from outside the cabin? That veritable tinkling of a bell? Why, none other than this young lady natural! More like a full set of pipes, if you ask me. I was so scared when I ran away in Shanghai. I was sure they would come looking for me. And that's why I decided to... How do you say? Disgust myself? So no one would recognize me? As a result, you transformed yourself into that questionable old man. I see. I put on the fur hat and... Fake beard? Then, just before you came in here, I saw it in the newspaper. Right on the page, there was a picture of me. I was so frightened. I couldn't stop from screaming. I knew that if I didn't change my parents completely, they would find me. A little odd, but okay. So I decided to cut all my hair as fastly as possible. I picked up the scissors in my hand and... At that precise moment, we walked in through the annoyingly unlocked cabin door. Things happen like that sometimes, don't they? Things do indeed happen like that, from time to time! Are, are those two even talking about the same thing? There's just one more thing I'd like to know! What exactly do you have inside your traveling case? You were right. It's my dear friend inside. My only friend in the whole world. Please, don't tell anyone. The captain finds out. You say it to any of the crew. Your secret is safe with us, I assure you. But in return, 
You must tell us in as much detail as you can muster about the events of last night. Yes, all right. I will tell you. Oh, Mr. Narahoto. Wasn't it something, Mr. Shulm's great deduction? It was certainly something, yes. I'm just not entirely sure what. But at least Miss Pavlova has agreed to tell us what she knows. That's incredible. Indeed, it is incredible! Ah, and one more thing! Oh, yes? What? Observe your wrists! Oh, no, my handcuffs are back. My... my wrists? Lame. Ah! Your hands are cuffed again! What? But, but how? Turn to my word! I have restored your shackles! Uh, when and why? There is still a shadow of guilt cast over you, Mr. Narahoto. I'm sorry to say, it can't be helped at the moment. Uh, can't it, really? Anyway, let's listen to what Miss Pavlova has to say. I can't go on not knowing. I have to find out what the speckled band that Cosmo Summer wrote in his diary really was. Did you know that someone was killed in the cabin next door to this one last night? One of the crewmen one of the crewmen told me this morning when I was eating breakfast. The man the man who died. He was a friend of mine. Oh. That's why we're trying to find out what happened. Did you notice anything unusual last night? Perhaps you heard a strange noise, for example? Perhaps people talking? Perhaps the ship was absorbed in a wild tempest? Perhaps its steam engine exploded? Perhaps everyone on board would have noticed if that had happened. The ship exploded, obviously! Miss Pavlova, is there anything you can tell us? I don't know. I'm sorry, but all I could think about last night was what I had done and whether they would find me. I didn't notice anything that was happening around me. Oh, I see. You've run away from your ballet company, haven't you? The Novovich Ballet? Yes. I am traveling to Great Britain, and from there, I want to go to America. I will never dance again. I want to forget everything about the ballet. I will start a new life. You wish to forget? A challenging proposition! When you have that striking tiara as a reminder! But the tiara is mine! I need it to live! I have no money of my own. The Novovich Ballet gives us only a little food and water, and we must dance all over the world. I had to run away. I had no choice. If I stayed, it would have killed me. So you ran away to protect yourself? Yes. And the crew of the ship, they have all been kind to me. They let me come on board, and they said I could hide in this cabin. That is indeed the truth, Miss Pavlova! It creates a most intriguing conundrum! Yes, it does! What do you think about it, Mr. Naruhuro? Me? Oh, well, yes, of course. I think we should hear Miss Pavlova's explanation. To what conundrum, I'm not sure, but. So they all know she snuck on board. She didn't actually sneak on board, they all just let her in. Miss Pavlova! Allow me to pose you a riddle! According to this newspaper, it was only yesterday that you absconded from the ballet! No! That being the case! It must have been last night that you boarded this vessel! However, the SS Burya stopped by no port last night! Ah, that's it, of course. So how is it, pray, that you come to be aboard? That's a good question. How did you get on this ship? Not that I think about it. 
The crewman outside the cabin acted very strangely when we mentioned that. It was just after we asked him about when the occupant of this cabin came aboard. That is not your business. Yes, you're right. He did seem to be hiding something. An angel descended from the heavens, bringing grace and beauty to the stage. Sorry, what was that? It is how the Russian newspapers describe. It is how the. It is how the Russian newspapers described one of my performances. And that is how I came here too. I descended from the heavens, because I am an angel. Excuse me. Considering English isn't your mother tongue, your description is very vivid. Mr. Sholmes once said, I can never resist the touch of the dramatic. It seems Miss Pavlova is the same. A genius descended from the heavens, bringing grace and beauty to detection. Words once said about myself. The quote from a wonderfully extravagant advertisement for the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, in fact. Yes, yes, Mr. Shelley. Anyway, it doesn't look like Miss Pavlova is going to tell us what really happened. Let's learn about that friend of yours. So the friend you mentioned is inside your traveling case, is that right? I don't think animals are allowed on board according to the rules of passage. Oh, oh please, don't tell. Don't tell any of the crew if they found my precious... Then the burly Russians would bestir themselves in unison to throw you and your case overboard, no doubt. Ah. So reassuring, Mr. Sholmes. What sort of pet is your friend? A little puppy? Is it? It is, isn't it? Maybe an adorable little rabbit? No. Ha! Huh! You cutted Russia as a land with small rabbits, do you? Oh. Don't they have small rabbits there, then? You may well ask. I have no idea! You two are miserable bunglers when it comes to understanding the nature of young ballerina's friends! Isn't it obvious? It must be a chicken! I, Kermit the Frog, deduce that she has a pet chicken! Really? Consider the benefits! A rousing wake-up call! Daily fresh eggs! And when adversity strikes, it could satisfy the needs of sustenance! So you'd eat your friends. I'll remember that. It's not a chicken. Well, what would appear this friend's identity is a closely guarded secret not to be revealed. <laughs> she obviously doesn't quite trust us yet. There's something I should like to show her, I think. Maybe she might be able to shed some light on it. Let's go back. Let's present the diary. Let's present Cosima's diary. This is the diary of my friend who passed away. His diary? Yes, and he wrote it wrote in it last night before he died. Something a little unusual, it reads. 1.23 a.m. I can hear a faint whistling sound. And then a few minutes later, 1.35 a.m. What looks like some sort of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. A speckled band? I don't understand. It's strange, isn't it? But the ventilator he mentions joins to this cabin, you see. It's up there in the wall. In other words, this cabin and the victim's cabin are connected together. Oh! Miss Pavlova, has something occurred to you? Does the speckled band that the victim mentioned mean something to you? Or the whistling sound, perhaps? No, I don't know anything. Oh. Excuse me, Mr. Roylot. Yes, what? Wow, she's fast. Captain would like to speak with you. 
You must come to captain's quarters at once, please. Alright, I will come now. What? You must leave, now. Oh no, it's fine. Don't mind us. Yes, please don't worry yourself, Mr. Roylott. Get out! The passenger said out! Or you want me to throw you out? Ugh. It looks like we'll have to leave investigating this cabin until later. What a pity. And so we lost our chance. Having still not managed to investigate Miss Pavlova's cabin, we are unceremoniously chased out. That is to say, we were quite literally picked up and thrown into the passageway outside. Ooh, to be continued. Well, this is definitely a good spot to wrap up today's episode. Definitely have a lot of questions that need to be answered. I am so sad about Cosmo's death, you guys. I can't even believe. It's been two and a half hours and I'm still, it's still, feel, I feel like it hasn't set in yet. So they were worried about Cosmo getting assassinated? The government? The minister of, they are saying, what, justice? Of Japan was worried about him being assassinated? That's crazy. Is it because of that trial with the British lady? Did that ruffle some feathers that they're really worried about? Did he get poisoned? I was thinking maybe it was a trained snake assassin, but that doesn't seem to be the case. It's this 15-year-old girl's pet snake that she doesn't want anybody to know about. She obviously seems, obviously seems a bit uncomfortable knowing that Cosmo saw the snake. I don't know, maybe she got help from somebody that was a bit threatening and that's how she got on board and maybe that's why they're, the crew is being awkward about it. I don't know, maybe someone else came in with her, I, I really don't know where this is going. But definitely had a blast here. Definitely took in a lot of information. We had our first introduction to Herlock Sholmes here. Definitely is a bit of a goof. Uh, saying a bit of a goof is quite the understatement, but I really like his character. Interesting to see more about the deductions. It is a bit frustrating to see him be so completely wrong, but it is definitely humorous. So I think the more we see of him, the more, I don't know... I don't want to say used to him, but more, hmm, getting along with his character, having it make more sense, because I feel like he's bringing humor to such a s serious time. And why did he think that we were a Russian assassin coming back from Afghanistan? I don't understand what that was all about. And he's like, I didn't say that. It's like, what do you mean you didn't say that? You busted it here and said that the guy in the closet killed Cosmo. But we're both Russians, apparently. I have no idea. So, definitely have some weird first impressions about him, but I'm very curious to learn more about his character. And said Dr. Or not maybe Dr. Wilson, but a Wilson back in Britain? Curious about that. Curious to learn if it has to do with the Dr. Wilson that unfortunately got murdered in the first case. What if everything's all connected? Usually that's how Ace Attorney works. They're all, they're all connected. All random bits and pieces from different cases at the end of the game will be like, Oh, I remember this part. I didn't think any of it then, but now I see what was important about that. So definitely, definitely very curious to see what happens here. But with that, that will wrap up this episode here. I believe this is episode number four of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles playthrough. If you guys enjoyed the video, which of course I really hope you did, don't forget to go on ahead and hit that like button. Comments for me, drop those down below. And if you're not yet part of the Ali's Treasure Trove family, I'd love to have you join me here. Make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, before I finish up this video, because it is getting quite, quite long, I do have to give a big shout out to all of my patrons over on Patreon. Thank you so much, you all, for going above and beyond with your support of me and the channel. I truly, absolutely do appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Do have four ultimate excavators, Jack Perez, Keith Muta, Mako, and Stephen Olivo. Then we also do have three gemstone miners. Welcome Mark to becoming a gemstone miner. So three gemstone miners, and then Mark Mardini and Stephen Bly, and then one crystal collector of John Michek. But thank you so much to all of my patrons, whether you're on a tier in which I say your name at the end of every video or not. Truly do appreciate your support. But with that, that does it here for this episode here on Ali's Treasure Trove. Thank you so much for watching, everybody, and I hope you'll join me next time as we solve some more mysteries, hopefully, here on the channel. Thank you for watching, everybody. Take care, and I hope to catch you again in tomorrow's episode. Bye!